Hello everyone, you're watching BK Hobby, and today I'll show you how I added a new 240 volt 50 amp circuit to my workshop to support my new welder. So before we start, I just want to make a disclaimer. This is not a how-to video. I'm just simply showing you how I did this. You should definitely check your local electric code for proper wiring or hire an electrician to do this for you if you don't feel comfortable or safe doing it yourself. Since I ran my power to a sub-panel in the shed, I can turn off the entire panel with a breaker in my garage. This is much safer than simply turning off the main breaker in the sub-panel and working around the feeder wire still alive. You'll see why in a bit. Now, I installed this panel and the breaker for it myself, so I know it's off, but when it comes to working with electricity, I'm very deliberate. I'm testing with my voltmeter here to make sure I've got no stray voltages on the feeder or neutral wires. For this 50 amp 240 volt service, I'm using a 6 2 NMB type cable. The cable has two conductors and a ground wire, which is exactly what I need for my welder unit. Even though my welder only uses 20 amps max, I'm sizing the outlet and the cable to the circuit breaker, which is rated for 50 amps. Six gauge cable is definitely tougher to work with than your normal 12 or 14 gauge, so I had a real problem with the panel insert not popping into place. I finally got it to clip in, but all this wrestling is exactly why I didn't want to have live power in the box while working inside. First, I'm installing the ground wire from the cable to the ground terminal block. I popped in the breaker, making sure it was secure and in the off position. Now, since this is a two pole breaker, I need to connect my two conductor wires from the cable to the breaker. I wired in black and marked the white cable with red tape to signify it's carrying a hot phase and isn't the neutral wire that white normally is used for. All that remains to do in the panel is to remove the knockouts for the new breaker and put the panel cover back on. You might wonder why I started running this cable and making the connections in the electrical panel first, but because I did this project in the late afternoon, I wanted to make sure I could get all the work inside the panel done first so I could turn the lights back on to finish the work, while keeping the new breaker turned off, of course. Running the stick cable was a bit of a pain, especially since I started at the panel end and had to run it through all the joists to the outlet on the other side of the workshop. Drilling new holes rather than trying to fit it into the existing holes helped. Since I knew getting the cable to fit into the outlet would be a pain, I put it in before mounting the outlet. If I was using 6 3 cable with 3 conductors, it probably wouldn't fit at all. Now I just strip off the cable and screw in the black and white cables into the two prong terminals. And connect the ground wire to the ground terminal. As inside the panel, I also mark the white wire with red electrical tape to show that it's not a neutral wire. All that's left to do is put the wall plate on and flip the breakers. Now I just need to make sure that I'm getting the right voltages. Face to face I should be getting between 220 and 240 volts AC. And from each face to ground I should be getting 110 to 120. That's what I'm seeing here so I know my wiring is good. So now I have a 50 amp outlet wired up for my welder and can take on some new projects with this new hobby in my arsenal. As always, if you like this video, go ahead and click the like button. And if you want to see more videos, please subscribe. Until next time, this is BK Hobby. Thank you.